There we go. Okay. Good afternoon and welcome to the final Train the Trainer session for the year. Um, we've had quite a few. We've covered a lot of topics this year. And the last one that we have for you today is social media for real estate. So um, I know that pre predominantly in these sessions, I am talking to um, brokers and managers, but also some team leaders. And the session that we're going to go through today is really a, a high level view of how real estate agents should be using social media in their business. Um, we're not going to go into some of the more technical um, click here, click here type of training for um, some of the different social media sites. Uh, we do provide a bunch of that, but I really want to kind of do more of an overview in this session of how you should be um, explaining the use of social media in their business to um, the folks in your offices or on your teams. And hopefully the session will give you some better ideas of what they might be doing wrong um, or what they might be doing correctly. Uh, I'll take a bunch of questions at the end because I know that I'll have some that come in. So uh, we'll go through this session and then we'll um, I'll answer any questions that you have live when we get there um, at the end. So uh, for those of you, if this is your first Train the Trainer session that you're jumping on live, this is how it works. I'm going to give you kind of an overview of the topic now and, and how to present it uh, as a trainer or a coach in your office or with your team. And I'm going to make sure that at the end of it that you're provided with any handouts or resources that we um, that we mention or that we reference in this session. We're also going to do a Q&A at the end, and I'll also give you my contact information. So if there's anything um, that you would like as a further follow-up to this session, you'll have my information there available to you. Um, just also know this session is going to be recorded, and a link to the recording as well as all of the handouts will be emailed to anyone who registered for this session to the email address that you use to register for this session. So if you have changed your email address over the year um, since you registered initially in the beginning of the year, um, you may want to just pop me a message or let me know. But in addition to that, um, for brokers, and this is brokers only, you will be able to access all of the 2016 Train the Trainer sessions on Launchpad, uh, and they are under the Resources tab, and you just click on Training, and you'll find everything there. So we'll try and make it nice and easy for you to find all of this. Uh, okay, so let's just jump right in. Uh, this is a session on social media, and what we're going to cover is a couple of things. First of all, the why. Why are they using social media in the first place? What to stop doing and what to start doing. I think these sometimes can be very helpful in understanding what they might be doing incorrectly and what they could be doing more effectively. Uh, we're also going to tackle the topic of content, so what to write about. I know this is probably one of the most common questions that anybody who trains in social media gets is, what do I write about? What do I post about? What do I put on my Facebook profile versus my page? What am I um, talking about on Twitter, or Instagram, or LinkedIn, or um, any of my social media sites? In general, what should content look like? So we're going to talk a lot about that today. Um, we're also going to be talking about the value of building relationships. Uh, social media is social, and so we are going to focus a lot on well, the relationship building part of this. And I would really encourage you, if you're using this as a training topic with your team or with your office, to really focus on the idea that um, this isn't about talking to people. This is about conversing with them and engaging with them. And so we will end with the uh, topic of engagement and how to really build more engagement on their social media sites. So these are the things we're going to cover today. And again, as I mentioned, we are recording this. So you will get a copy and I'll give you all of the slides. But I also want to let you know we will take Q&A at the end. So don't feel, feel free to, um, to write those questions in as we go. And we'll go back and answer some of them as we get to the end of the session. So why does social media matter? We still have quite a few folks in our network who don't use social media or don't use it in, in a business uh, from a business perspective. They mostly use it to keep in touch with their friends and family and share funny stories and things like that. And that's great. But why does social media matter in terms of our business? Well, I'm going to give you a um, I'm going to give you a uh, example here. Um, Really, the first thing I want to start with is this, this idea. Social media has really changed the fundamental relationship between companies and customers. And I talk about this all the time. When I started in real estate um, nearly, a, well, more than a decade and a half ago now, um, business was simple. You, you had one-way communication. You had something to sell. And so, um, you know, you basically looked like this. You have something to sell. And you have a sign that says this is how much it costs. And, and basically, uh, that's the extent of the communication. So 
for example, um, you would have an open house and you would put an ad in the newspaper and you would say, this is the open house and people would read that information and they would um, respond to your service. And so business was very much a one-way street. You would talk to your customer and your customer would potentially take action. And that's really what business looked like even up to maybe a decade or so ago. But then the internet happened and this is what it looks like now. Uh, it's an interaction of people talking to each other and talking back to businesses and asking questions, but then expecting to have uh, communication with each other about the services that they received. So this is how business has changed. Uh, we still have a message. We still push information out to our customer, but our customer expects to be able to talk back to us and give us feedback, but also they talk to each other about the services that they provided. So when you look at this image, this is how the internet and specifically social media has changed the way that we do business because it's not enough for us anymore to just put an ad in the newspaper and expect people to do something. We have to be engaging and we have to be engaged. And that is really, really important. So when you look at this, I would I would always recommend that this is a great place to have a conversation with your agents and your team about the value of online marketing and not just social media, but the value of being present on the internet, because that is where, let's face it, 100 percent of people start their search these days. They don't go to encyclopedias or dictionaries. They don't go to the library. They go to the internet. And so they're searching for information and we really need to be there and be findable and also engageable. Um, so that was, I just made those words up, but I think they work. So um, on that note, a couple of stats I want to start out with here in terms of why social media is important. 90% of web traffic by this year uh, is, is video. So every 90% of everything that happens on the internet that's streamed or uploaded or downloaded or watched or engaged with has an element of video. And we see this um, in the format of GIFs, but also uh, on Facebook now, everything is video format. Uh, YouTube is quickly becoming the largest search engine. These, these stats are important because this is how people search. Uh, in addition to that, our brains process information 60,000 times faster um, if it's visual than text. And so this is really important to know. Our brains are taking in information visually through photos, images, videos, and we're not really reading as much as we used to. So all of this is starting to have an impact on what we expect in terms of taking in information. I love this one as well. By the year 2020, 85% of the buyer-seller interaction is going to happen online through social media and video. So that's just a couple years away. We're actually only three years away from 2020, which is a little bit scary. And 85% of the buyer-seller interaction when we get to that point is going to be online. Um, when I first read this, I, I kind of thought this is a bit, seems a bit ambitious, but then I started doing some shopping online um, earlier this year. And I started realizing that, you know, now when you shop online, you get these pop-up videos that allow you to talk to somebody, a real person. Um, you can chat with them. You can automatically use your Facebook account to log into that chat. Uh, you can then share with your friends what you're looking at and ask their opinions before you buy. Uh, this is all something that our consumers are getting used to. They're getting used to having online interactions uh, to help them form their opinions and, and really decide on their purchases. And so this is becoming something that is becoming not only prevalent, but normal. And, uh, and I think this is going to have a great impact on our customers and how they expect to be able to interact with us. So what does all that mean to you? I mean, it really means, and this is something that when you're training this topic is some of the most important points that you can make is you have to be both interesting, but you also have to show that you're interested. And that's a really big key. You've got to use some visuals and you've got to start using video to connect. And you have to be available online when somebody goes and searches for you. And we still have a huge portion of our network and our industry who are really not getting on the video train. They're not getting comfortable with FaceTime or Facebook Live or really just creating simple videos to represent their business or even um, to portray some of the great testimonials that they have. And um, just like we saw folks really falling behind a few years ago who weren't embracing social media, we're now seeing folks that are falling behind because they're not embracing video. And so um, if, if anybody in your, in your network or your office, your team is looking for a way that they can really start to bring their business uh, to the forefront of kind of just 
the technological revolution in 2017, I would recommend that they start getting comfortable being on camera. And uh, the really the only way to do that is to to do it. So um, those are a good couple of first points to help them understand why social media is important because our our customer is expecting to find them online and be able to engage with them. Social media is one of the easiest and best ways to do that. So I like to start with this stat or, or sorry, this comment, this quote, every time I talk about social media, I'm famous for saying this, you don't have to be everywhere. You just have to be somewhere really well. I think one of the biggest misconceptions that our, our folks have about social media is, oh my gosh, I have to be everywhere. I have to be on Instagram and Pinterest and Snapchat and Twitter and LinkedIn and Facebook and, and everywhere. And they don't, they really don't have to be everywhere. They just have to pick one and do it really, really well. It doesn't matter where people find you online as long as they can find you online and engage with you. So I usually recommend, you know, go where your clients are, but also go where you're most interested. Because if you're interested in it and you're passionate about it or you're engaged with it, you'll do it well. So that's really important. Um, so let's get started. These are the topics that we're going to cover today. We're going to talk about having a strategy and how they can start with a strategy. So few of our folks have a strategy around social media. They just kind of jump right in, sign up for something, and then say, now what do I post? So we're going to address them having a strategy today. We're also going to go over what to stop and start doing. Uh, as I mentioned, we're going to talk a lot about content. We're going to go through building relationships, and then we're going to talk about how they can create some real engagement, a couple of ways for them to really start thinking about using social media for good. So let's start with the strategy portion of it. So many people don't do this. They skip this step right, um, right away. And I think one of the reasons why they do that is they focus on social as something they have to do. Um, they're always saying, Val, like, how do I do social media for my business? When really what they should be asking is, how can I be social? online. And when you look at it that way, it's completely different. It really does put a completely different spin on what they spend their time doing online. Um, it's not about pushing content out and just continually blasting content at people. And trust me, there are all kinds of vendors out there that will suck their money right out of their wallet and push content out for them and say that that's enough, but it's not. They really have to be themselves and find a way to be social online. And this is key. It can be a little bit scary. It might require them to be a bit vulnerable or take some time and learn some things, get out of their comfort zone, um, communicate and educate themselves on what they're doing right or wrong. All of that takes a little bit of practice, but it's not any different than when they um, you know, were, were originally learning how to do anything that they're doing in their business now. It's just practice. Um, so starting with why is really important. When we talk strategy, most of the time people start at the other end of the spectrum. The first question I generally get is, Val, where do I, what, what social media post, you know, platform do I need to be on? Where should I be? Should I be on Facebook? Should I be on LinkedIn? Where is the very last question you should be asking? So when you sit down with your folks and you start talking to them about their online marketing strategy or where they're spending their time, this is where they need to start. Why? Why are they there in the first place? And not, this is not some sort of why are you on the planet? This is why are you talking on this platform to begin with? They're all going to have different answers. None of them are wrong. Um, some of them may say, well, I want to stay in touch with past clients or I want to be in touch with my family and friends and remind them that, that I sell real estate for a living. Or maybe I want to communicate with other agents and vendors and suppliers so that I'll get referrals from it. Um, maybe I'm there just to help promote my listings or the stuff that I do every day. Maybe I'm there to create a real community presence and establish myself as an expert in the community. All of those are very valid solutions and very valid whys. But it's really important that they do identify their why. Because if they don't have a why, they're just going to end up throwing spaghetti at a wall and hoping that it sticks in terms of content. They're not really going to know um, why they're talking at all. And so they're just going to spew. Um, so it's really important that they do start with the why. And the second thing that they need to do is then talk about the what. And this is what do you want to accomplish while you're there? And what kind of content do you feel you should be sharing? Um, so as we're working through a strategy, okay, you know your why. You know that your why is to remind your clients that you're still here for them even after they've bought or sold. So what do you want to do to accomplish that? Do you want to be warm and fuzzy 
Do you want to provide them with really good insight and education and valuable information about the communities they live in or the houses that they've purchased? And so once they start going down that path, what kind of content they should be sharing, it, it really starts to make sense. Okay, if I'm dealing with um, staying in touch with past buyers and now they're homeowners, the kind of content that I should be sharing should be targeting people who own a home. So DIY projects and home improvements and taxes and bylaws and community information and, and um, you know, mortgage rates for um, things like um, refinancing. All of that stuff should be focused on the, the audience that you've identified in your why. The next step is who's your target audience? And this really already ties in. So once you know your content and you know exactly who you're talking to, it makes it very, very easy to start figuring out what you should be saying. And that's where we get to the very end of the strategy, which is where should you be posting and sharing? If you started at this end and you said, okay, where should I be? I should be on Facebook. Now, what should I post? You've skipped all the most important parts. Who are you talking to? What do you want to accomplish? And why are you there to begin with? So have them really sit down and work through those four steps backwards. And this is a helpful process, even if you're not talking online marketing. For those people who are sending out a ton of newsletters or print marketing or putting a ton of dollars into online ads or offline ads or um, campaigns, they really should be on a regular basis reevaluating their why, what, who, and where in that order. Otherwise, I think we tend to just see that they just continue to churn money into the same content all the time. Okay, so this is really the strategy uh, process. And I would encourage you to walk through this process in your business planning, uh, especially when you get to where are you spending your time and your money. Knowing your why, what, who, and where is really going to help you budget that time and money wisely when it comes to your marketing, but also help you really focus on what you're doing on social media to begin with. The next step and the next common, most common question I get is who has time for all of this? Uh, This seems like a giant time suck. And um, you 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 do get a lot of trainers and coaches out there saying social media is a waste of time. Social media, if you're just there to chat and share memes and talk about cats and funny stories, can be a waste of time. But if you're focused on it as a part of your marketing strategy, and you're using it to build real content that is shareable with the people that are listening to you can be a very valuable way to market yourself. And so you need to do, you you definitely need to know what are you spending your time on that's not valuable and what should you be spending your time on? It's also important for them to maybe set a limit. Um, Just like they could sit down and time block time to prospect, sitting down to time block time to stay in touch with folks on social media can be a really effective strategy. In addition to that, being consistent. We have lots of folks that start a Facebook page or a Twitter account or a Pinterest board, and then they never go back. So being consistent, making sure that it's just like farming. Online marketing is exactly like farming. you got to show up regularly. you got to provide great content. you got to have your face out there in front of people on a regular basis in a positive way. So all of this kind of ties into their strategy in terms of the time they spend and the effort they spend, and are they spending it on the right stuff? I like to show them this graph. Um, This is probably one of the best, simplest ways to break down what they should be spending their time on, and it's really the rule of thirds. So a rule of third, uh, one of the thirds here is listening and reading. Just observe what other people are talking about, especially if you're connecting with folks in your community. Also make sure you spend at least a third of your time having conversation. Talk with people, talk to people. Um, you know, it's if you're going to just talk about yourself all the time, people are going to stop listening to you. So make sure that you're engaging with other people's content as well. And then about a third of the time, creating new content, posting um, valuable content for the folks that are paying attention to your social media sites. So this can be a really good goal for them in terms of creating their strategy. So once they have a strategy, they kind of know what they're doing there and who they're talking to and and what they're focused on. It's one of the best ways to kind of do an audit on their social media is to start looking at what they should stop doing. And the first thing that most of um, our agents and team members should stop doing is just this vanillaizing of content in that they're talking to everyone. You know, everybody that's on this call right now or listening to this recording knows that at one point or another, you have been invited to an open house in another country or state or province 
than where you are now um, online. And, and you look at that and you think, I'm probably not going to end up coming to your open house in Kansas this weekend. And you wonder, you know, is this an effective use of your time on social media when you're talking to essentially everyone instead of targeting your content to the right people? So one thing that I would really encourage they stop doing is just blasting out the same content to everybody. Facebook has lists. Um, you can definitely use hashtags on some of the other sites, but start target marketing the content that you're putting out, or at least identifying who your audience should be to make sure that you're talking to the right people. Uh, this kind of ties into the same thing here, sharing the same thing everywhere. You see a lot of folks that are still putting the exact same post on Instagram at the same time they're putting it on Pinterest, at the same time they're putting it on Twitter, at the same time they're putting it on Facebook. And I can tell you what, that these different sites were created differently for different purposes. And if they're just spamming the same content everywhere across the entire internet, one other thing that I see them do wrong, and this is a good point to bring up, is don't post the same comment or question in all 17 of the groups that you participate in. Because chances are the same people are in some of those same circles and it just tends to look like spam. So that's something where you really do need to actually put some thought into what you're saying and where you're saying it. This is also something that I would, uh, that I would recommend that they stop doing is posting with just text, no photos. Um, right now already your eyes are glazing over looking at what's on your screen. People are visual creatures. As I mentioned before, our brains take in imagery 60,000 times faster than they take in text. And so if you're constantly almost always posting with just no images, no videos, no, no visuals of any kind, you are losing your audience to that constant scroll of just um, scrolling through and not stopping because it's not catching their interest. So that's really important. Also, not having any sort of strategy at all is something that they need to stop doing. Um, just using social media with no strategy, no measurement, no ability to track the ROI, or whether they're even reaching the right people, uh, just posting stuff and then never coming back until they post something again. This is all reasons why social media could seem like a total time suck. So make sure that they have a strategy. Number five, the fifth thing they need to stop doing is using too many tools and trying to be on too many sites. A lot of people get really caught up in all of the shiny objects and the, yeah. in the different, um, all of the different uh, things that are available to them and trying to be, like I said, on every single social media site. Um, so making sure that they really hyper focus on something that they care about, that they will do well, will really help to serve them better. So now that we focus on a couple things that they should stop doing, what should they start doing? What are most of them not doing that they could be doing better? Well, the first one is pretty much what our mothers all taught us. We have two ears and one mouth for a reason. We need to start listening more than we talk. A lot of people go onto their online um, accounts, whether it be their blog or a um, social media site, and they just tend to dump information and walk away. Don't tend to stick around for the conversations or engage with people. A lot of times I see a post that's created a ton of conversation. There are a whole bunch of comments below, but the, the original poster, the, the agent, never went back and engaged on any of those. They didn't say, why do you feel this way? Or thank you for disagreeing with me. That's a great other point of view. Or um, thanks for sharing your stories they just don't come back and engage. The whole point is to start a conversation. So listen and have those conversations. Number two, uh, probably the biggest sin in our industry is just making it so darn difficult for people to contact them. Um, many of our agents don't fill out the about me section on their social media sites. There are no websites there or email addresses or links to uh, ways to contact them. And so really what they're doing is they're sharing any sort of content with the world and not giving the world any sort of call to action to follow up with them. I would recommend this as a huge um, glaring thing to fix for 2017. If you're going to be talking about social media, making sure that every time you're there, somebody has a way to contact you. I can't tell you how many times a day I see folks post, I have a great new listing. Um, it just hit the market. Contact me for more information. There's no MLS number. There's no link to their website. There's no phone number. There's no email address. There's no, uh, there's no link of any kind. And then you go into their about me section and there's no way to contact them. No phone number, no email address, no website. And I just think, uh, 
what option does that leave me with? I want to find out more and you've just made it difficult and now I've given up. Um, so making it really simple for them to contact you should be a good point of focus on social media. In addition to that, don't always be talking. Ask questions. One of the very best things that you can post on social media are questions. What do you guys think about this? What would you do in this situation? How would you handle this particular situation? What would you like to see? Um, and really open-ended questions, not stupid closed-end sessions, um, questions like, how old were you when you bought your first house? That leads to zero conversation. How about things like, you know, if you were looking for your first house now, at this stage in your life, knowing what you knew when you bought your first house, what would you spend money on versus what you wouldn't have spent money on and why? Help me to understand where potential first-time home buyers might be coming from or what kind of advice can I give them? All of those things create great engagement and show that you are uh, someone who actually cares about your clients. One of the other things that you should start doing is providing solutions. Once you have all those questions and those um, perspectives that other people are offering you, offer those up as solutions. Um, one of the things I tell our agents all the time in training is you get asked questions every day. You're in a position where people just feed you content. What should I ask a home inspector? Where do I find someone? Is it worth it to change my countertops? You know, do should I rip out my bathtub and put a stand-in shower? Is that going to affect the value of my property? All of those questions are fantastic pieces of content. And so one of the things that they can do really well is take those pieces of content and provide some solutions. Hey guys, here's a question that I get asked all the time. Here's the answer. That's fantastic to start sharing on social media. So leading into what we should write about, one of the other questions that we get asked all the time, and you probably, if you're having any of these training sessions with your agents, are what, what kind of content? What should I be sharing? What should I be writing about? And this is what I usually answer. Your greatest responsibility, and not just responsibility, guys, but your greatest privilege as a real estate agent is to educate your customers. We get to do this all day long every day. It is our privilege to be in a service role where we get to help people and they get to go away from a transaction feeling like they know more now than when we found them. And that really should be our goal with all of the content that we're sharing. Our greatest responsibility and privilege should be to educate with the content that we share. And so when we look at the word value, what kinds of things does that actually mean? Well, teaching them something, solving a problem, educating them on the community that they live in, entertaining them, sure, but encouraging them to read more, understand more, or feel more comfortable with the investment that they've made or are making, but also something that they're going to want to share with others. That's the whole point. And so um, that question, what should I write about? What should I share? I usually say, put these on a sticky note and hold everything that you put in your marketing up to uh, these goalposts. So whether it's a postcard that you're dropping off to your farming area, or it's a post on social media, or it's an article on your blog, whatever it is, are you hitting at least one of these goalposts? Are you solving a problem? Are you teaching them something? Or are you giving them something that they would want to share? I think these are, this is a really good um, guideline to work by. Also want to encourage them to start using more visual information. We talked before about how they should stop just using text. Really encourage them to start getting into photos and videos. Now, everybody carries a camera and a video camera around in their pocket constantly. It's called our smartphone. We don't use it as a phone. Mostly we use it as a camera. Um, but you go out and you see things all the time. Community information, what's happening in the community, that great coffee shop or the new school that's being built. Take a picture, comment on it. Don't just note it and say, oh yeah, okay, that's great. I got to remember that. But take a photo and share that. Talk about why that's going to be significant to that community. These are all things that make really great content. In addition to that, putting text over top of photos. Um, I really encourage our agents to stop just sharing photos without text on top of them. There's some really simple and easy tools that'll let you do this. Canva, Picasa, PicMonkey, the Over app. All of those are great options for putting text on top of your photos. If you're going to share a great photo that you've taken of your community, take the opportunity to put your website or a caption or your name or a watermark or the address of the property on top of that photo. So as it's shared, the information stays with it. 
that's a really good tip for anyone who's using visual marketing. One of the other things I do, and I like to share this one because this is created by a company in Denver that I think does this a very does this very well, is take information that's otherwise super boring or is interesting but is can get a bit tiresome in just text format and make it look interesting. I love this. They do this on a regular basis every month and they show the average sold price in the neighborhood, but they also show the highest price property that sold and the lowest price property that sold. They also share you a bit of information about the market, the average days on market, how many homes have been sold in the area year to date. Is it a seller's market or a buyer's market? What does that mean? All of this is really great information. And if you were to drop this in your farming area, even on a quarterly basis with this kind of information, this is value. This is stuff that people would look at. Um, I got a flyer in my mailbox the other day that showed a hundred houses that all said sold on top of them. No addresses, no prices, just a big giant sheet of paper with a hundred house pictures that all said sold. And at the bottom it said, call the agent that will get your house sold. Now that was interesting and maybe people would say that's compelling, but it, as a homeowner in that neighborhood who's not looking at selling right now, it told me absolutely nothing that I would want to know. It didn't give me any prices. It didn't circle the one that was the highest priced or the one that was the lowest price. It didn't tell me why one would have sold for more than the others or even why any of that information was valuable to me. Um, so here's a, what you're looking at is a really good example of taking some of that packaged information that our agents have and turn it into a great infographic that you can share online put this on social media. This is shareable. It's interesting. It's educational and it's visual. It ticks all of those boxes. So this is a really good example to share um, when you're talking about content. Uh, consistency. We talked about this a little bit earlier as well. Consistency is really key with all of this. You don't have to post a million times a day. Everybody who says, you know, who has time for social media needs to remember if you're running a Facebook page as a business or you are being a professional real estate agent online on your social media accounts, you can post once a day. You can post three times a week. Whatever you do, though, you need to be consistent and you need to have quality content when you post. A lot of folks think that they need to post several times a day on their Facebook page to continue to keep it um, viable and in front of eyeballs. You don't. You just need to provide really great content that means something to somebody and they'll share it and they'll engage with it. So let's move on to sort of, now that we've kind of talked about how they should be using social media, they need to have a bit of a strategy, what they should stop doing and start doing, and some of the best practices. Uh, and then also we've talked about content and what they should be posting and what they shouldn't be. Let's talk a little bit about using it to do what the most important part of their role is, building relationships. How do we actually turn these brief conversations or these eyeballs that we're getting on our content into people who want to use our services? First of all, I like to always put this out in front of people. So what? Every time you create a piece of marketing or you write a post, whether it be a tweet or a Facebook post or an Instagram or a snap, or whether you put it in a newsletter or on your website, look at it from the perspective of your customer and say, so what? You need to remember that it's not about you. And this is something you need to remember when you're training this is to say this to them, look them in the eye and say, guys, this is not about you. It's about what you can help your customer with. And you really need to care enough to address their needs and wants because people don't care how much you know unless they know how much you care. True, true story. So make sure that you're taking the time to think, so what, from the perspective of your customer. Um, I really love this, this, um, this quote. I, I use this one all the time. The day that you start talking to your audience and it's about them, that's the day when business really starts. Um, the day that you stop talking about yourself all the time is, and the day you start focusing on who you're actually talking to and about what they care about, that's when business starts. And so if you think back to the story I told you a few minutes ago about the giant flyer that I got in my mailbox with all of these sold houses, that didn't speak to me. That spoke about my agent or the agent on that flyer. And I looked at that and I thought, so what? And so as a as an online marketer or an offline marketer, the agents really need to start putting so what um, to the test in terms of everything that they're publishing. One of the most important things they need to remember in terms of using social media for good and creating relationships 
is the offline follow-up has to happen. It can't just be online. You do have to get face-to-face. -face. Uh, it's never going to replace that. And you guys know that um, it helps lead to face-to-face -to -face probably more often than um, maybe a, a Yellow Pages ad used to, but the magic really does happen in real life. And so the goal is to post great content, get people to comment on it, and then you start a conversation that you say, let's take this offline. Let's have coffee. Let's talk about, you know, the fact that, you, you know, you really are feeling the pinch and need to, to move into a larger house or maybe, you, you know, it's time to downsize. But overall, let's have a conversation. Let's take this offline. Conversations are really key. I do find that a lot of times more of the conversations are moving to private messaging. And uh, I find that this is really where the, the in-depth conversations are happening. So be there to have those conversations. Get comfortable using the messenger features of all of the different social media sites that you're using. Uh, it's not enough to just be on Twitter if you're not checking your direct tweets. It's not enough to be on Facebook if you're not checking Facebook Messenger on a regular basis. You're finding that a lot more of the in-depth conversations that, that kind of come from social media are going into those, those private chats quicker. More people are apt to give you a comment on your post in private chats than they are publicly. Um, and that's a good thing. That means immediately you're one step closer to making it personal and taking that conversation offline. So having those conversations are really key. One of the most important things about, about posting on social media, though, and one of the most important things that I can't, uh, I can't stress enough is it is about the engagement. It's about you being there, and it is, yes, about having a strategy and sharing great content and turning those relationships offline, but it's also about making sure that you're doing some good with it. Um, so let me give you a couple of examples. People are always saying, you know, what does that mean? How do I create engagement online with my social media? How do I... How do I get people to really see me as a real person? First of all, you have to be a real person. One of, the, one of my favorite things to do on social media is to see people telling their actual real stories. Hey, you know, it was five years ago today that I did this. Or um, this is the kind of person uh, that I work with in my community and, and, a, and a really nice tribute to somebody that, that works in their community. So this is the guy who delivers my FedEx and comes to my office every day, or this is the person that I drop my dry cleaning off to, and they have a story. Um, all of those people make up their communities. And if you can be seen as the online mayor of your community, as the person that creates those stories and has those conversations, people will remember you as a real person. That is key online. One of the other things that we need to encourage our agents and team members to do is find ways to give back. We can't just always make it about ourselves. We have so many people doing really wonderful things behind the scenes for our different charities and community uh, causes and things like Habitat and um, just a, a numer just innumerable things that our agents are doing really well. And I'm not saying go on there and talk about yourself, but talk about the ways that you enjoy giving back in your community and encourage other people to do the same. Lots of people are looking for ways to volunteer, especially this time of year. They're looking for ways to give back. Now's a great time to kind of lead that charge. And that's a really good way to create real engagement that even takes itself offline. One of the other things that I would really recommend is building something that lasts. Uh, we we tend to see people that start doing something and then they lose interest or they're not seeing success and so they stop. This is true in um, offline farming as well as online farming. They tend to try something, they don't do it consistently, they don't see a result, and so they don't continue. Um, I would really recommend that if if this is if this is something that somebody's serious about and they you know they want to spend more time being more effective on social media that I would recommend that they pick something and really focus on it and stick with it. So whether that be a campaign on social media where for 30 days they create 30 videos where they highlight one different business in each uh, on each day in their community and why that business is doing good things for the community or is a great place to go and have breakfast or is a fantastic place to take your dog to be groomed whatever it is be consistent, pick something and build something that's evergreen that people are going to refer back to, that they're going to talk about, that they're going to share. Um, that's really where the meat is. And that's how people uh, remember you. 
So that's really important as well. Um, in addition to that, you, you've got to, in, a, in order to create real engagement, you have to know your audience and you have to talk to them like people. We have to stop talking to people like they're leads or like there's nobody on the other side of our keyboard. These are real people. These are our past clients and our customers, our referral partners, our vendor partners, our industry colleagues, our family and our friends. Talk to them like they're real people. Don't say, I have a new listing. Say, I, I would love to introduce you uh, to the most beautiful home on Walnut Street and why this is a beautiful place to live. And if you know somebody who's looking to move into this area, this is why they should pay attention. Not, I have a new listing. We're not robots. We've got to talk to people like people. And that's maybe one of the number one ways that we could improve our social media without a whole lot of effort. The last thing I want to leave you with, and then I'll take some questions, is this is one of my favorite quotes. And I've had this as the header on my Twitter account for the last four years. Business is about loving the people who do business with you and giving them more value than they have any right to expect. I think the driving force between us being successful online or offline in any of the marketing messages that we do anything that our agents do. And if you sit down and you do this training session with them, this is the one thing I would really want to, uh, to really have them dig deep into is business is about loving the people who do business with you and giving them value, making them feel like they are the most important person in the room right now, or the most important person that you're talking to. And if we can we can hold that up as the gold standard to all of the marketing that we do online and offline, whether it's postcards or flyers. Um, you guys know our folks send out a ton of content. There's always something going out, newsletters, posts, whatever it is. Is, is that content showing real value and also letting them know that they love the people they're doing business with? would really encourage them to start um, holding that up as a standard. So what are some of the big takeaways here? And as I mentioned, we went into this kind of high level. We didn't talk about particular tools and resources. We, we do a lot of training on those. What I really wanted in this was how do you practically apply the rules of online and offline marketing to what you're doing in, in your real estate business? And these are some of the big ones. Know why you're there. Have a why and really use that as your North Star. Also, listen to the questions that you're getting. Pay attention to the things that people ask you on a daily basis. That that is the gold nugget of content right there because people want to know the answers and you have them. Also, huge, huge key push for 2017 if they aren't already, get comfortable using images and videos. Get comfortable pulling out your phone and snapping photos and sharing photos beyond just, hey, here's a sold sign. We see lots of sold signs. But you know what? You and I both know that is not all of all of what you do every day. You work with people and you counsel them and you negotiate on their behalf and you, uh, you're a, you know, a therapist and a personal shopper and a, and a helper and an encourager and all those things. Find ways to use images and videos to tell those stories because the way you tell stories is the way you're going to be remembered. We have been telling stories as humans since the cavemen days when we sat around fires. And the, the fires of today are social media. Tell your stories. Also, really important that they know their audience. Who are you talking to? How is this going to resonate? So what? Ask that question on behalf of your customers before you hit post, before you print that flyer, before you put that whatever it is in the mailbox. But more than anything, and you know I always end with this, don't be afraid to try something new. It's a new year coming up. This might be one of the sessions that you guys teach in your offices as part of your ramp up for a new year, or even in January as part of business planning, start looking at your online marketing as a real part of your business, not just a place to go and share cat pictures and have a laugh, but as a real way to establish expertise and show the people that you do business with that you love them. So what next? Well, we've recorded this session and I'm going to be sharing it with all of you um, to the email address that you use to register for this session, but also you are going to be able to find these in the resources tab of Launchpad through the training session. And I'm going to leave this up for you so you've got my contact details. I'm going to go in here and see if we've got some questions, anything that we can answer um, here. So um, let's look here. Can I recommend... Um, an app or somewhere that we could create similar marketing reports like the graphic I showed. Yes, absolutely. Um, there is a good infographic site where you can get free ones called PictoChart. And that's P-I-K-T-O 
C-H-A-R-T. So PictoChart is a great one. And the other one that I really like is Canva, C-A-N-V-A. So PictoChart and Canva, both will give you free templates um, to allow you to create a similar graphic like the one I showed you from Denver so that you can use that on a regular basis. Um, so when it comes to social, here's a good question. When is posting too much detrimental to your personal brand? Um, you know, posting too much, it really depends on your audience. Um, I follow a lot of people on social media and there will, there will definitely be people where I'm like, oh my gosh, you know, I've seen 15 posts from you today and it sort of feels like a lot. You're all over my newsfeed. But on a regular basis, um, I try personally to stick to no more than three posts a day unless I'm having a really amazing day or I, I'm at an event. Um, you know, I, I try not to share more than that. Um, so as a, affecting your personal brand, there's no right answer to that. It really does depend on who your audience is. But I think personally, I would try and, and not post a million times a day. Um, the next part of that question is, what about content? Some folks say no politics. Uh, that's a tough one right now. And uh, oh, we're down to what, 11 days until this election is over. So that'll be nice. Um, but as far as politics, things like politics and religion and, and things that are super um, controversial, I think it depends on how you do it. But it also depends on your audience. And you know your audience better than anybody else. So I don't think there's any one hard and fast rule. There are people that I follow online simply because they do talk about politics and they talk about politics in a way that I agree with them. So I follow them specifically. Now, that being said, those are not real estate providers. And so I think in terms of running your business like a business on your business page, you should probably steer clear of that kind of stuff. But as a personal person, like as a real person on your, um, on your profiles, I think that you can get away with being yourself and being authentic if you are professional about it. Um, so it really is up to your audience. If you're finding that you're getting a lot of pushback, that might be something you want to dial back. But it's a personal decision that you have to make. I don't think I can make that as a rule for anybody. Um, okay, last question that I have here, I don't have any other questions in the queue, is just can you please email me this webinar? Yes, as I mentioned, you will all get a copy of this. Um, you'll have the email out this afternoon. Um, I will also include a survey, so if you don't mind, please filling that out and letting me know um, how I did and how you enjoyed these, or if you enjoyed these, or if they were terrible this year. And uh, we'd love to get your feedback to improve Train the Trainer sessions for 2017. So that's going to be it for me. I will let you go. Thank you all for tuning in. For you that are those of you who are watching this as a recording, hopefully you'll find this helpful. Um, my contact details are on the screen. Please feel free to reach out if you have any questions. As always, I'm here to help. Have a lovely afternoon and we will talk soon.